yes i'm not disputing that there are situations there are circumstances that sometimes you just feel like let me just end it here i'm telling you i guess one of the reasons why god will not forgive people that take their lives aside the fact that they can't create one and they are taking one is because you are here to discover somebody or some set of people that have been through or that are going through worse situations than yours and they are not giving up on god they are not giving up on life so how dare you want to think of committing suicide don't give up on yourself and on god especially because you don't want to know because you really don't know what somebody somewhere is going through and the things I go by that in as much as you can't create a life don't take one I know there are times there are situations in life that could make somebody with this kind of belief or thought that has even talked to people about things like this to do otherwise I've heard pastors, I've heard of pastors, I've heard of motivational speakers, I've heard of formula people that we are looking at that they are good, they are okay, they are doing well. That commits suicide. Why? Because they encounter some situations or challenges of life that even their title their positions, their connections, the things they hold here could not even stop them from committing suicide. What made me to come to this thought? Recently, um, I was down. I was feeling down, not with the thought of committing suicide by God's grace. Thank God for that. But I was really, really down. I was very 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 down tired about many things a lot of things so i was just going through my youtube then i pop into a video i just saw a video so i was like normally i didn't want to open the video because of the uh what do they used to call this front page that you use so the kind of um the cover yes the video cover that i saw it's not the type that motivates me to want to open it. I just felt, okay, let me just open it and see what this is all about. So I did. I opened it. So when I opened it, I saw a video. I was sorry. Yes, I saw a video about a guy. His name is Lauren. When he was 19 years old. An incident, uh, an accident occurred in his life. He encountered an accident. Lauren was a, a was an ordinary teenage in his late teenage age. So sometime in December, if I'm not mistaken, it was December twenty seventh, two thousand and nineteen. So if you could ask yourself, December 2019 on the 27th precisely, what were you doing? Because on that fateful day, an incident happened that changed the life of a particular teenage boy, teenage guy, forever, that divided the story of his life into before and after so in the next slide i'm going to show you a video 
I saw that that summarized everything that happened to Lauren. In um, the, I got the video from Live Stories on YouTube. So please watch. I'll tell you a story about an ordinary man whose life changed in an instant. I think we all could learn a lot from the people featured in this video. The 19-year-old Loren Shars from Great Falls lived an ordinary life of a teenager, cherished many hopes, and made plans for the future. He had everything he needed to be happy, a loving family, a good job, and of course, a loyal girlfriend. Loren was a cheerful and responsible young man who understood the need to work hard for his happiness, and that's why he ended up at the bridge construction site. The work wasn't easy, but despite his young age, Loren appreciated the opportunity to work. His relationship with the girl named Sabia was going great. They were in love and understood each other perfectly, spending all their free time together. It was probably their strong bond, along with the premonition of something bad, that haunted Sabia on that life-changing day. That morning, Sabia woke up in a bad mood, feeling a sudden anxiety attack taking over her body. She tried calling Loren, but he never picked up the phone during working hours. The young woman was feeling very anxious, and then she got the call that divided her life into before and after. A woman's voice on the other end of the line told her about a tragic accident. As it turned out later, Loren was driving a forklift along the bridge that was under construction, when suddenly one of the trucks broke the rules and overtook him at a traffic light. The young builder never lost his composure in stressful situations, so at that moment, he tried to find a way out of the situation, but the only thing he could do was veer closer to the edge of the bridge. By a terrible coincidence, the bridge began to crumble under him. Thus, realizing that he had to take immediate action to save himself, the young man tried to jump out of the forklift that was plummeting from a 15-meter height. Unfortunately, there was virtually no time to maneuver. The young teenager was caught by the seatbelt, and when he finally did manage to jump out of the forklift, he saw the four-ton truck rushing straight at him. It may be hard to believe, but even having survived the terrible incident, Loren remained conscious all the time and watched his arm and lower body get smashed by the heavy vehicle. Rescuers quickly arrived at the scene of the tragedy and took the injured teenager to the hospital, where the doctors found Sabia's number in his phone and called her. Twenty minutes later, Sabia was already in the intensive care unit praying for Loren. Nobody told her anything specific, but judging by how many doctors and surgeons kept running into the room, Sabia realized that the situation was very complicated. All she could do was pray for her beloved boyfriend to survive. As it turned out later, Loren lost part of his right hand, but the doctors were still hoping to save the patient's legs. After many hours of surgery, the doctors came to the conclusion that they'd have to amputate the young man's pelvis along with the lower limbs. This was the only chance to save his life although the doctors couldn't make any promises even with this course of action. It's hard to imagine what Sabia must have felt at that moment as she was waiting for the doctor's update. She said goodbye to her beloved six times, having lost faith that he would survive until the morning. However, what's really amazing is that Loren didn't pass out even then. He was conscious up until the doctors administered anesthesia. He even managed to write a short I love you note for Sabia the night before the surgery. Despite the realization that her boyfriend was saying goodbye to her, Sabia still refused to believe that it was the end. The doctors even suggested that the relatives say their goodbyes because Loren's condition was so bad that only a real miracle could have saved him. And jumping ahead, I just really want to say that the real miracle did happen 12 hours into surgery. The surgeon saved Loren's life, but the hard part was still ahead. After all, he was now a disabled person and his life would never go back to normal. We can't know what we would have done if we found ourselves in Sabia's position. Whatever we may think, it's still definitely a challenge to choose to live your life with a disabled person, especially when you're a young and attractive woman. Some people told her to move on and give up on the hopeless situation and forget Loren. But as you probably already guessed, Sabia didn't leave him. Moreover, this incident made the couple closer than ever, and they even got engaged while still at the hospital. After four weeks of physical therapy, the young man came back home and began to adapt to the completely new life, in which everything was much more complicated than it used to be. Loren gradually learned how to put on his prosthesis and get into the wheelchair by himself, but he still had a lot of things to learn. While getting to the kitchen from the bedroom used to be an easy task, this distance felt like a journey now. 
The former builder could hardly find the strength to do ordinary household chores, but he understood well that he had to try hard for the sake of his fiance. Thus, he invented unusual ways to do what he needed. He used his ingenuity to become as independent as possible. And in the face of obstacles, he found so many non-standard solutions that maybe a healthy person could have never even thought of. My fiancé is an amazing person, Sabia said in an interview. He didn't just manage to adapt to new circumstances, but also supported Sabia. Now Loren is thinking about his future, as he wants to be able to earn a living for his family. In addition, the couple is planning to go traveling, and a little later, they want to have children and raise them as good people. Well, after having overcome so much, they are bound to succeed. My advice to anyone who has experienced something like this is not to get stuck on what you can't do. Live your best life and appreciate what you have, Loren once said, making many people think about his words. And most importantly, don't go after what doesn't feel right. Find the right person for you who will always love and support you because none of us can be sure what will happen tomorrow. That's the story, friends. It may seem sad, but it's really about true love. So if this guy, Lauren, can still smile in spite, in spite of his situation that he's not even saying anything big deal about it, I don't know what you have been through or you are going through now. Please be encouraged. Be encouraged that somehow, somewhere, there is somebody that you are better off. That was it. not out of pride or something, just out of gratitude and find reasons to be grateful. So before I go further, I just want to plead with you. Please, if you are watching this video, kindly go to your YouTube channel. Just the same way you watch different things on your YouTube. You clean it on the subscribe button for the name um, Lawrence and Sab Sab Cyber. Did I get it? Did I get that right? Anyway, I will write the correct name, their YouTube name below this video. Kindly search for their names for this name and click on the subscribe button. Share with your friends and don't just do that, please. Make sure you watch one or two of their videos, especially the ones that they, they, they answered, they did Q and A, question and answer. You learn a lot about this guy. And Lauren did not really have a, a, a fantastic relationship with his parents like that. He, has, he had a rough childhood with, with his parents. And um, as a firstborn, talking to many firstborn, I uh, was spoken with many firstborn. I discovered that many firstborn and many children are having issues with their parents. And if you watch this guy's video, despite what he's going through, despite the past relationship he had with his mom, this guy is still not holding grudges. That's another takeaway for many people. In case you are having any issue with your parents, your mom, your dad, let it go. Life is too short. So quickly to add this to it, when I was watching this video, I decided to download it on YouTube. I downloaded it on my YouTube. So I'll be able to watch it when I'm less busy. So I decided to watch it with our last one. And she also suggests that, why don't I share it on my platforms for people to see this? Why? There is depression everywhere. Yes, things are not going as many of us want it to be, to, to go. Yes, there's distress in the line. There is things not to be grateful for. But you just don't know how how somebody will be so grateful to God if they can just be in that situation you are not grateful for. They got married last year, um, February 28th. Yes, February 28th, 2021. If you watch, I, if, if you 
if you watch the Q and A sessions of their videos, I learned a lot from this guy. You know, one of the things about me is that I always pray that Lord make the story of my life such that when somebody hears the story, the story of my, the story of my life, the things I've been through, the places I've been through, um, the places I've been, the things I've been through. Somebody somewhere, somehow will be able to say, because of this person, I won't give up on life and I won't give up on God. Watching the video of this guy is a living testimony. And lastly, the, another lesson I picked from his question and answer sessions and some of his other videos, because I am getting to really know this guy more than than the what the one or two videos i've watched i want to watch almost all his videos to really get to know him yes this is not an this is not some this is not an advert for him i just felt led to do so that why not in a little way that i can do to help him and what how can i help him is by sharing his video sharing his stories to motivate and encourage somebody, some people out there. So all I'm begging, all I'm asking, all I'm pleading with you is that please, 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 please search for Lauren on YouTube, follow him, subscribe for him. Um, I really pray, I really wish that we get to minimum of 1 million subscribers before the end of this year. To subscribe is free. To click on likes on his video is free. To share his video is free. Why? Just to motivate somebody out there that I don't want to know. I'm sorry if I sound aggressive, but I really don't want to know what you have been through, what you are going through. That is worse than what this guy has gone through or the pains. He goes through every now and then, therapies, surgeries, operations here and there. And this guy is still, is still giving hopes. I, I really wish you also share this video. The same way I'm sharing it with you. Hope it, will encourage, it has encouraged you and it will do so to other people as well.